So endurance is an excellent way to start because those of you that train other people are going to have to deal with runners and cyclists. What do runners and cyclists all have in common? A, they won't train with barbells. They're, and B, they're not very strong. They're not very strong. Would they be better at their sport if they were stronger? Why? You have to be able to explain this to them. All right? So let's go back to the bricklayer analogy. All right? Bricklayer works with 80 pounds of bricks at one time. He's got to carry them up the ladder and put them on the scaffold or whatever the hell the bricklayer's laborer does. Right? He handles 80 pounds of bricks at one time. And we all agreed that a guy that could deadlift 600 probably has an easier time dealing with 80 pounds than a guy that doesn't deadlift at all and only got strong by dealing with 80 pounds of bricks. We all understood that, that little concept, right? Is there a way to quantify that? What would be a way to restate that, that case so that your cyclist client can understand it? Okay. That's correct. It, if you get stronger and increase your absolute strength, an increase in your absolute strength makes submaximal contractions even more submaximal, right? And the easiest way to, to explain this to a cyclist is to use a cycling analogy. All these recreational cyclists get out there on the highway and they're doing about an 18 mile an hour pace at a cadence, at a recreational cyclist cadence of about 75, right? Now you guys know that the, the racers all ride at 90 and above, right? Their cadence is real high. They try to get real high cadence. But a recreational person is going to ride at 18 mile an hour pace at about 75 RPM. Now, if you had a way to measure each one of these pedal strokes, you could determine how much force the guy was applying to the pedal on each of those 75 pedal strokes on each foot per minute. Okay? Each one of those pedal strokes is a quantifiable amount of force produced against the external resistance of the pedal. Let's say that each one of those pedal strokes, just to assign an arbitrary value to it for the purpose of illustration, each one of those pedal strokes represents a percentage of the guy's absolute strength. Let's say that it's 20%, all right? Just a jerk a number out of our ass. 20%, push, 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 75 times a minute. All right, so the following scenario is science fiction. We're gonna get the cyclist to come into the gym and lift weights for about five, six weeks. All right, so it's actually more like fantasy, not like science fiction, it's like Harry Potter, all right? So we're gonna get the guy in the gym, we're gonna have him lift weights. All right, first day in the gym, what do we do? We find out how strong he is, because that's how we do everybody, right? And let's say that uh, the first day he can squat 95 pounds for a set of five. Okay, that's reasonable. I mean, he's got some strength. He has been, you know, he's not been sitting squarely on his ass. So he's strong enough to do 95 for a set of five. We're going to keep this guy in the gym for six weeks. Now, during that period of time, what are we going to do to his squat on our program? We're going to make it quite a bit stronger, aren't we? And it is not a stretch of the imagination to to say that over that period of time, we're gonna get him to a 200 pound squat, we're gonna double his squat. Any intact male can do that in five or six weeks, right? 10 pounds jumps the first two or three workouts and then five pound jumps, ends up with about 100 pounds worth of squat in a fairly short period of time, doesn't it? 
It's not a gigantic investment of time. It's not a gigantic metabolic achievement. You just doubled a shitty squat. Okay? Anybody can do this that knows what we know. All right? Now, we've doubled his leg strength. We've doubled his squat. Right? And our proxy for his absolute strength is going to be his squat. And it doubled. His absolute strength doubled. Now, put him back out on the bicycle. Okay? Put him back on the bike. And what happens to the amount of his absolute strength that he's using for each one of the pedal strokes? It's cut in half because he doubled his strength. If it was 20% before, what is it now? It's 10%. Now what can he do with that extra margin? Well, he could go farther. He could go longer. He could go faster for the same length of time. He could push a taller gear. Right. 